Hey there, StarCraft fans! It's Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft Brood War Remastered! Today it's going to be a match between Sulky and Rain. And I'm not entirely sure what the map is. Maybe we can figure it out real quick, okay? It was in Korean in the loading screen, but uh, let's see. Ugh, it's basically Fighting Spirit, but on a different tile set, right? Well, the naturals are a little bit different. But yeah, it's basically Fighting Spirit. If you know the map name, let me know in the comments and I will update the title. Alright, man, this is an exciting one. At top right hand corner, we have the Red Zerg player. It is a Sulky. Well, not. It's Brown, actually. Under his nerf name, In Insung Moo. And in the bottom left, it is the Purple. Protoss player, it is Snow, two elite, all-time great, duking it out for a year today on whatever the heck this map is. Thank you so much to RJB for acquiring this replay for me and sharing with me for the channel to be cast. Please check out RJB's YouTube channel if you haven't already. He does pretty much all fastest map ever stuff. So if you're into fastest map from elite players like this, he has like flash fastest map stuff, guys. Check him out. Search RJB Starcraft in your YouTube search bar and you will find him easily enough. Now, boy, golly, look at that pool. So overpooling it here. I mean, it's not super insanely fast by any stretch, but it is an overpool play. Just to be safe, we have seen Hatch first go poorly for Zerg players recently on the channel against Terran in particular. So overpool is just safer, especially on giant four player maps where you can't really hope to scout out your opponent before they show up with, you know, cannons or bunkers or something bad like that. So, I support this. I support the overpool opening. It's standard. It's safe. Probe shows up. Uh, did he actually cross? He's got two probes. Wow. He sent two probes out to scout. And now he's blocking the hatch because obviously you're going to find your dude if you send two probes out, right? Oh, the battle here. The, another drone has to come down if Sulky wants to expand. Oh, crikey. I'm so happy to be casting Sulky, by the way. This is a 2018 game, I believe. That was sent to me by RJ Beam. So it's not a 2020 game, but I'll probably put 2018 into the title for you guys so you know. Because I get asked that a lot. And yes, the Matt has changed quite a bit in the last decade or 15 years or so. So it is just good to know. Now, Probe in here scouting about, trying to see what's up. Sees no gas and recognizes, okay, this is not going to be any kind of a two-base speedling all-in style play for sure. Drone shows up, sees what's what, which is a very standard forge expand out of the Protoss player. And so far, it looks like we're going to take a quick third. If I had to guess what we're up to, and yes, there's a drone coming up to take that third base. All righty then, gas on the way. Slowlings are really not going to be able to catch this probe and kill it. They can get a couple hits off, but look at the shields regening on this thing. 14, 15. Oh, took a hit. That's just all your work down the tubes from taking a hit from those links. But you don't have to do. If you control this perfectly, oh, the jukes. Look at him splitting the defense there. Oh, took a hit there. That's not good. But he can do this pretty much forever until speed is done. So he's going to try to see the layer timing. Going to try to see maybe if we get a Hydralisk Den. These are all things that you want to know if you're a Zerg player. So top base being taken. I swear this is... Whatever this map is, it's Fighting Spirit in like... Shakuris tile set. I remember this tile set when it came out in Brood War. Because it wasn't around in StarCraft 1. I, did, I fell in love with it. I think the very first mission in Brood War, where your Zeratul is on this tile set, and I was like, whoa, it's blue and alien and mysterious. Still, that stuck with me, man. That moment of booting that thing up in 1998, being like, oh, cool, an expansion for StarCraft. And then it was awesome. And Now, today, I'm casting it on YouTube. Uh, YouTube did not exist back then. I would have, like, right? I could have told myself. At that time, hey, this Brood War game you like so much, you're going to be casting it for thousands and thousands of people on YouTube, on the internet, in, you know, 20 years. And I'd be like, what? Nah, get out of here. That's ridiculous. But that's where we are. Time is an interesting construct, for sure. So there's your layer timing. Because guess what? This is the Stargate. Ta-da! And we're going to do the standard things. Man, when Bisu completely changed the matchup years and years and years ago, did we know how much... It would stay the same. Like, Bisu's renovations and evolutions to the matchup are still around today. Protoss players open Corsair. They just do. They open Corsair, which means the Zerg player has to open Spire. And then from there, we can do different stuff. But if you don't have... Excuse me. If they don't have those two things, you're just toast. So there's your Spire coming up at the natural base. 
a little bit harder to scout, maybe? I don't know. Speed's almost done for these lings at five minutes, though, because... Crikey, mate. Five minutes. Hmm. Anyway, quick PSA for your Saturday. I do post stuff every day of the week, so if you're like, Falcon hasn't cast a Brood War game in like six or seven days, garbage. I have two. I promise. It's up there. Come right to my YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Falcon Paladin. Very easy to find, and you will see everything I posted over the last seven days. And beyond, because I post things every single day, okay? Every day. Uh, Isanandru, which is how you say every day in Malagasy. One of the few things I remember how to say. Anywho, the Lings are here to see if there's a big Zealot attack coming out, maybe. And, yeah, maybe. I mean, no. We're not getting speed for the Zealots, but we are getting a Templar Archives. So this could be a DT Corsair opening, which, again, the more things change, the more things they stay the same. This is a 2018 game, for heaven's sakes. Hydralisk Den, Spire about to finish here. Third base is pretty hard to hold. You really want to get your Sunkins up and compact it in because you can't really hold one entrance. There are two entrances you have to worry about. Again, just like in Fighting Spirit. This is freaking me out how much this map is just like Fighting Spirit, but just on a different tile set. And again, the expansions are a little bit different, but not much. Like, a little bit different. Right? Yes. Okay. So Link's cruising on down. They're like, we can kill three Zealots. Especially if they don't have upgrades yet. And they don't, but they've got back to the safety of the cannon just in the nick of time there. That's what they wanted to do. They walled off. Another cannon coming in because uh, the link count is getting a little bit scary. Corsair's hanging out because they're worried that there are Scourge out on the map now because, behold, there are Scourge out on the map now. And, yeah, it looks like a DT Corsair attack is coming. Does Soul Key know about this? I don't know. What would be really nice is getting a Spore. Like, one or two of those. Maybe one for each base. Maybe just one for your natural and one for your third base if you're into that kind of thing. And Scourge, I don't think they got hits there. Let's take a look. Uh, maybe one hit on a Corsair, yeah. One hit on a Corsair, but did not kill it, and that's all that really matters. The additional gateways coming in here. Yeah, man, this is planning on being Dark Templar. That is what we're looking at here. Although High Templar and Storm are coming in too, so, hmm. There's at least one DT cruising on out, but, it, I mean, without Corsair support, the Overlords are here, and that DT is has to flee for its life. Is Speed for Overlords done? No, but it's on the way. And now Zealot Legs are coming in. I feel like Snow's not quite sure what he wants to do here. It felt like a DT Corsair opening. But as it stands, not really not really the focus of what he's working on right now. He has stopped Corsair production. He is working on air weapons, though, and getting attack upgrades and making High Templar and Storm. And he's worried about a big Hydra attack, which, you know, to be fair, it's coming. So... <laughs> He's going to have Storm. This DT will scout the presence of the Hydras coming across the map. The DT is trying to kill Hydras, but he has to two-swipe them, and they're faster than he is. So as they're running by, it's hard to get any actual kills. But this is why you have Storm. This is exactly the reason you get Storm at, you know, about the seven-minute mark is because, well, there's going to be a Hydra attack. If you're not the one putting on the pressure, the Zerg player will. So the Hydras are actually getting hacked to pieces a little bit. Where'd that DT go? He's, le he's left. Okay. Great, so the Hydra's are going to sit here and mash you in the face. Storm is done, so behold, Storm numero uno, be, let it be cast. This guy wants to cast it. He has the energy for it. Oh, but the gateway goes down. If they stop this plus two attack upgrade, that's going to be massive. Uh, Snow, I recommend against losing that forge. All right, so the Zealots decide to jump out. They're going to jump out to try to save the forge. They have to. It's a bit of a desperation play. I see that DT heading up to the 12 o'clock position. We'll see if it gets in there or not. But yeah, Zealots with speed, man, they are pretty good against these Hydra. We talk about that a lot. Uh, what is actually defending uh, this here base? Not much, to be honest. Hydra's popping out our defense, I guess. But man, great job getting that surround, getting the flank attack with the Zealots, not getting stuck on the choke. And then this is some great play by Snow. Look at him killing these Hydras. More Hydras pouring on down, though. They don't have any attack upgrades, but they do have the speed upgrade and the range upgrade. And plus one attack is on the way. That Forge is getting... I don't know. I think you can snipe the Forge. Like, yes, yeah, so worry about the Zealots for the next two seconds and then jump on that Forge and get it. It is almost dead, and that is a huge, huge loss. More Zealots cruising on out, though. Oh, it's going to be close. I mean, I know it's almost dead, but the Zealot production is pretty good right now, and the Hydras don't want to engage with that necessarily unless they have overwhelming numbers but maybe i don't know focus it's really fast to focus on this forge it has 100 hp if the zealots aren't going to engage with you get that get the forge okay a couple hits there storm 
If you start hitting the forge, you get a storm to the face. That's what we're looking at here. Another gr that was a great storm. Six kills on that High Templar. Dude, he's going to save the forge. Snow, you are sick at this game. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Sacrificial 9 HP. Uh, got it. Oh. And so many Hydras died to snipe that plus two attack. And Snow's like, well, I lost an upgrade, but I killed like 30 Hydralisks for it. So that's pretty good. I mean, sure, a lot of Zealots died too. This is just mass Hydra play. Uh, I mean, there's really no sign of a Queen's Nest or upgrading to anything else. He's just pumping Hydras. That plus one attack is going to finish here. Lurker Aspect is coming in, so we are attacking up to something beyond just pure Hydra. Which, again, can be pretty good. Southern base being taken, and the timing is correct. Solki recognizes what's happening, and you sent over some Hydralisks. Just look. They're going to keep coming, man. Just get the Nexus. This is really good from Solki, though. Okay, Storm is here. Problematic. Get the Nexus. Just get the Nexus. Don't worry about... Just get the Nexus. You're all going to die anyway. Look, man. I guess you're trying to make some decent trades here on these Zealots, which is cool. You have plus one attack, which actually helps immensely against these Zealots. They have plus one attack as well, though, which is a problem for you. The micro is not really happening right now, which I find problematic. And Archon shows up. I'm not even kidding right now. Get the Nexus. Just come behind the minerals. Get the Nexus. Ooh, that Lurker Egg going to hatch. I don't know if these Lurker Eggs are going to hatch. Archons do pretty well against eggs as one goes down. And he holds... The 6 o'clock by the absolute skin of his teeth. Skin of his teeth. This lurker's going to finish, though. Burrow, now. Uh, trying to kind of sort of focus down the Nexus a little bit. Lurkers versus Zealots are okay if they're not being detected. Look at him pushing. He wants to kill these High Templar. Get revenge for all the Hiders that have died today. And Oh, they had to turn themselves into an Archon to stay alive. So is there detection present? I don't think there is. Meanwhile, Corsairs are overlord hunting. Up to the 12 o'clock, but there's hiders there, so that should be fine. Uh, the Lurker will kill this Nexus eventually. But not anytime soon, because... Oh, two Lurkers, though. Maybe more of a problem. Where did the second Lurker come from? I did not even see that anywhere. Must have morphed. One of the hiders must have morphed during all the confusion. Hiders continuing to pop on down here. Uh, that plus two attack is not even on the way from Snow right now. Ah, but there's an Observer. Ow! Oh! Just barely gets the Nexus. Dude, Sulky is getting some nice victories here. He barely just cancels that plus two attack, which still, again, has not been restarted today. And then he barely gets this third base. I think Sulky might have this game won. I think based on those two things alone, upgrade advantage that he has and the base advantage that he has, and he's taking a fourth base. Sulky is an old school, incredible Zerg player. I am so glad that RGB was able to find some games of his from recently because I thought he was done. But nah, he's around. Look at this. Scourge getting killed by cannons. Not the greatest control there by Solki, but it's fine. Look at this mass Hydra play. I mean, this is something that we've seen in Control do on the channel recently. It didn't really work out for him. And people were like, it's not a good strategy. Why didn't Control do that? He's dumb. Look, man, first of all, it works. Look at this. Look at this play. From Sulky, it's working for him. Mass Hydralisk with Lurker support. It's doable. If your opponent has a ton of Storm, yeah, it's harder to pull off for sure. Look at this bait. He's like, hey, I'm over here. And then he sneaks down and he's going to get he's gonna get the third base again. Like, Snow is playing super well here, but he's kind of getting outclassed by what Sulky is up to. Focus just, I'm so tired of seeing these Hydras fight. You're here to kill the base. If you kill the base... And then get out, more of your Hydralisks will be alive. But instead, you try to fight these Zealots, and everybody dies, and the Nexus stays alive here. More Hydras, though. Look at this. More Hydras coming in. That Archon, not very good against Hydralisks. At this, your opponent's going Mass Archon as a Zerg player. You want to go for the Hydras. You know, tech switch back into Hydra if you're in something else. So, yeah, I don't even know what that was. Like, sure. you just If you're going to fight on a base, kill the base, in my particular opinion here. Because, again, your hiders are dead anyway, and you didn't kill the Nexus. Like, standing in fight doesn't do anything for you. I guess, okay, so it's a matter of the guaranteed damage, which we talked about a lot, which uh, Day9 taught me many, many years ago. <sighs> I suppose there is the p chance that he could have tried to kill the Nexus and not been able to do it. 
And then he loses a bunch of Hydras and doesn't kill the Nexus, and that's bad. So fair enough. Soul Key being smart. I just feel like there's little windows in here with these Hydras, with the plus two attack that they have. Yeah, this particular composition for Snow is just asking for Plague, like really, really wants Plague. But that is not what Sulky is interested in here today. Sulky is making 11 Hydralisks at a time, getting stormed in the face. Reinforcements flanking in from the left side, though. And Zealots are just buffering so well. Oh, High Templar kind of exposed a little bit. And gets one. Gets the other one. Nice target firing on the High Templar. No, too slow, man. You are too slow, High Templar, for sure. Attack coming up north with Zealots to the third base of Sulky. No Sunkins up there, mind you. Zero Sunkins. But he's going to block the ramp with a Lurker Rag. Beautiful. Disgustingly good play there. The Hiders are delaying a little bit there, too. Third base happily, happily running at the moment for a, a Snow. And we're on four bases. So that was a jam-packed first 15 minutes, I can tell you this much. It's slowed down a little bit, but it is 122 to 106 supply. Snow has a lead. And I still don't see a Queen's Nest coming in that production tab for Sulky at all. I do like the tossing up of a Sunken at the fourth base, though. You're going to want that. Again, ooh, High Templar snipes, man. Sure, you lost some Hydras, but those High Templar snipes, those are expensive units. They're 150 gas each, man. That is expensive, and they're so important. And if you have 10 High Templar in the mid game at 15 16 minutes rather than zero high templar it really makes a big difference for you especially when your opponent is going for all of the hydras in the known universe there's no storm here there's no storm here and not a ton of zealots i don't think this is a problem dragoons in a straight up fight against hydras with plus two attack are not going to have a good time they have plus two attack themselves now though actually and he does actually shove the hydralisks away Another attack up here. This pressure from Sulky has been insane. Insane. Another base coming up from Snow on the left side. I like this. I, Sulky is not interested in scouting that at all. Another High Templar snipe, and it's just like, hey, you don't get High Templar anymore. They each get one storm, and then they die. That's the plan that I have for you, I'm afraid. Uh, you can take it, or you can leave it. Again, coming in to take down this third. And again, Snow responds with most of his army. Storm in the ramp is like, hey, I thought you didn't get High Templar. What is happening right now? Lurkers from the low ground just splash damage all over those zealots. Blah, 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 blah. Lurkers getting attacked. Again, the Dragoon count is enough that Lurkers are not going to be super great here because there's no Dark Swarm to protect them. Because we're on Lair Tech at 17 minutes, ladies and gents. Still tacking on in. Trying to snipe down these Lurkers. Ooh, there's no detection here. And the DTs are kind of having a field day with these Hydralisks. The Hydras have to get out. Where is your detection? Your Overlords have speed. This Corsair is absolutely... <laughs> Fare thee well, Corsair pilot. You have done an excellent, excellent job. I just... The problem is the High Templar count is low, remember? All right, there's one. I guess there are three here, but how much Storm do they have available? He's got one. They don't because they're turning into an Archon. Yep, so that's your last storm for the next little while here. How many hiders are still flooding in right now? Oh, I lost another High Templar. I don't know. Soul Key is down like 20 supply. 25 supply right now. But he just keeps sniping those High Templar so beautifully. 13 hiders in production. He's working on armor upgrades for his Hydras. He's making more lurkers out of his injured Hydra lists. He does know about this base, right? He can see this. He can. He knows it. He knows it's there. He's setting up to attack it. Taking this base down would effectively end the game, I believe. But uh, again, army just kind of deciding whether or not where to defend exactly. Hiders are fast. Not as fast as speedlings are, but they're pretty zippy. Storm up. Is he trying to snipe the observers a little bit? No, he's trying to snipe the High Templar. But just taking storms right to the face. I think I did hear an observer die, but there are several of them. I guess there's only one remaining now, though. More High Templar coming on up. They have the Kadaran Amulet upgrade. They're going to have storms available for days here. The... 
Dude, I don't know, man. I like what Snow is doing, but suddenly it's 98 to 102 supply, and Sulky's not up, but he's a lot closer than he was a second ago. He lost a lot of hiders, but he's able to kill a ton of supply. Those High Templar are dead, so. And this left base is being protected by cannons against two one Hydralisks. Just kidding, we're going right to the front door. Woo! These Sulky Hydras, though. Another base coming up down to the south, by the way. By Sulky. And High Templar storming what they can. I mean, this is just going to be a case where the Protoss player kills like a thousand Zerg units and loses anyway. This is what it really feels like to me in this game. And now he's up. 102 to 96 supply. For the first time today, I think, he has more supply than the Protoss does. Snow is really good at this game. But I think Sulky is going to come out on top today. This is just... There's one High Templar here. And like 15, 16 Hydralisks. And the Zealots can't even really engage here. They're trying to do it with the cannons. But cannons suck against upgraded Hydras too. Lurker in the mix just out of the range of the cannon attack fire there. High Templar A moving into his death. And he does go down. Production tab says four more High Templar. But they're not here yet. And I think this is it. This is just a big old Hydra Lurker attack coming in. 104 to 85 total supply. The supply continues to fall. Four snow. And I think that's your GG. Observer sniped high ground storm. One more for the road. These High Templars just have a bad rally, I think. And they don't they don't spawn with enough energy for a storm, but Well, you're dead now anyway. So natural base is toast. The new sources of income do live though. And have not actually been attacked by anything. I'm interested. This is This might be one of the first games I've seen ever. There you go. Jo Snow GG's out. And Sulky is your winner in 21 minutes and 42 seconds. Hit that like button if you enjoyed that one. That was a ton. A ton of fun. Holy cannoli. What a match. This might be the first time I've ever seen a Zerg player just go right down the throat of the Protoss. After, you know, after the 20 minute mark. Usually... In professional games, you just want to snipe the new bases, the new sources of income. But man, Sulky's like, I think I can win this way. And he did. Coming right up this ramp, sniping down the natural base. And yeah, these two bases just, you know, keep chugging along. Do, 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 do. But yeah, this, man, 54 workers, hydralisks, lurkers, no hive in sight. So this is it. For all of you who are mad... All of you who are mad and in control for not uh, going up to a hive in his ZVP the other day against Goody, I think. It works. In the hands of a master, it works. I've seen in control do it, and now I've seen soul key do it, and it's a viable strategy. As long as your macro is insane, right? You're constantly pumping hydras out of your many hatcheries. You have macro hatcheries everywhere. You're just going hydra. You're going lurker. You have overlords there for detection. You're going to lose so many hydralisks. But he can just overwhelm the Protoss, even if the storms are good. Snow's storms were really good today. But he just got overwhelmed is what happened. And again, I mentioned this previously, but I think sniping the plus two attack and then sniping the third base were the things that allowed him to make this work. You can't just sit back and macro up and not bother the Protoss at all. You got to slow them down with your Hydralisk you're pumping. And that's what Sulky was able to do. Woo! That was good. Ah, so good. Thanks, RJB. Thanks again, man. That was fantastic. Uh, 192,000 points, rather, from Snow. Look at this. 174,000 points from Solki. This is one of the rare times the player that wins has a lower score than the loser. Like, 20,000 points lower. Look at that. On the other end, units produced uh, about 500 there for Solki. Lost 300 of them. But that's a good ratio of your <laughs> remaining units. For sure. But yeah, look at this. Look at this. He made 200 units, killed 311 units, and lost. Rough stuff there. Uh, rough stuff there for snow. Structures raised, yada, yada, yada. Nice job there by uh, Sulky. And then just the fact that he was on four bases for a while there. Got a fifth base up, sniped the third. Yes, the income tab's going to favor him too, and that's kind of how this works. So that was beautiful. Man, I... Soul Key, good stuff, man. I mean, I know there's a reason people have been requesting Soul Key games for a while, and this is definitely why.
<sighs> All right, so that is going to be it for me today. This has been Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft Rude War Remastered. Go ahead, hit that like button, hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch, all at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching, and you take care of yourself. <laughs>